Good evening. Welcome to yet another installment of Dwayne Allen Guitar Concepts. I hope you guys have been doing great lately. I have been doing pretty well. I've been keeping busy with all the things that I do with teaching and gigging and everything else. So I wanted to um, put in a new lesson tonight for those of you jazzers out there in the advanced category. So I wanted to kind of teach my approach to probably one of the most important jazz tunes that anyone practices when they're learning how to play jazz and developing as a jazz musician. It's the great John Coltrane tune called uh, Giant Steps. And Giant Steps is one of those tunes that's kind of a rite of passage for any jazz musician. It's one of those tunes that once you learn how to play it and you can play it well, you've kind of gone to that next level. You're definitely, you know, an advanced jazz musician, whatever that means at that point. But um, I remember myself for many years practicing this tune and trying to learn it. It was always hard. It's hard for any instrument, you know, whether you're a guitar player, piano player, sax player. It doesn't really matter. It's just a hard tune. It's got a lot of really chain, uh, strange changes that jumps to different key centers. That's what makes it kind of difficult. Um, so I wanted to kind of like teach you guys this song using my concept that I call augmentation. I've done this in a few videos as far as like uh, showing you how to t do a certain standard with augmentation and how to break tunes apart like that. And I think that really helps with this song. I've had a lot of students that have wanted to learn this song. And when I did the augmentation concept, they actually learned it very well, very quickly. So if you haven't seen my earlier video on augmentation, I think I teach the song, All the Things You Are. You should check that video out because then you'll understand what it is we're gonna do here. So there's many, many approaches to giant steps. There's all kinds of um, patterns you can work out and all kinds of different harmonic concepts. I'm not gonna get into a lot of that. I'm just gonna apply this one concept to giant steps. When I play giant steps and when I listen to the, a lot of the greats of the past 30, 40, 50 years play this tune, they tend to not play patterns as much when, you know, as we all know, the great John Coltrane recording. John Coltrane did a lot of pattern type stuff where he was using like the pentatonic scale. And it sounds really cool, but it was pretty much the re it was what he was doing because he had just invented this new language of harmony that he was playing out of. So it seems in the last several decades that people kind of don't play it that way as much I tend to try to approach it like any other tune where you can play melodically over it, rhythmically, motivically, all those things, just like any other tune. So the easiest way to learn how to do this tune is like I said, with my augmentation concept. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna probably record like the first two lines of the song, because if I do the whole song like this, it's gonna take too long. What I do with this concept is, as you guys know, if you have the sheet music, it's B major seven, D dominant seven, G major seven, B flat dominant, E flat major, and so forth. The chords go two per bar. So it's two beats per chord for the first two bars, and, and then E flat is a whole bar, and, then, and so on. What makes this song hard is the chords come quickly. They go chord, 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 and they're not really related to each other. So it makes it very challenging to solo over. So what I have my students do is play four bars of each chord slower. And really, as you're improvising over it, you're really focusing on the chord tones of each individual chord. So for like B major seven, you're focusing on the chord tones of B major seven. And D dominant seven, you're focusing on the chord tones of D dominant seven and so forth. So I'm gonna record the first two lines into my looper. I'm just gonna do it with a bossa nova feel just to change it up a little bit. Um, so I'll say it as I'm doing it, okay? Uh, I'm not going to stick to the spacing of the tune. You'll see what I'm talking about in a moment. So every chord gets four bars. Here we go. B. D7. G major 7. flat dominant E flat major 7 A minor 7 D dominant I'm only 
we're gonna do this first line. It's gonna take too long. Here you go, B. So focusing on B major. Arpeggios, chord tones. A. D7. B. the first line you could do it one line at a time like that too if it's really hard for you just focus on getting on the first line then the second then the third doing it all these ways could take weeks and weeks to really get it down so I just did four bars per chord okay now I'm gonna do two bars per chord and what I'll do is since E flat is a whole measure and then B major is a whole measure I'll do four bars of that one. So it's two bars of B, two bars of D, two bars of G, two bars of B flat seven, four bars of E flat, then two of A, two of D. You get the idea? So I'm kind of, I'm doubling everything up. I'll do this one, maybe swing. One, two, ready, go. D seven. G major. B flat dominant. Flat major seven, four bars. A minor seven, D dominant, G major seven, B flat dominant, E flat major, F sharp dominant. So I did two bars of each chord when there are two chords per bar. When it's one chord per bar, then I would do four bars. So I'm kind of just doubling everything up. You guys get the idea so far? All right, I'm going to do it again. One bar of B, one bar of D, one bar of G, one bar of B flat, two bars of E flat, and so forth. Okay, we'll do the first two lines again. So as you can see, the chords are getting, they're starting to contract now. By the time we do it in real time, it's not going to be that hard. So here we go. One one uh, bar per chord. One, two, ready, go. Two bars. 
bars E flat, one bar A, D, G, B flat, E flat, F sharp dominant, B major, two bars, F, B flat. trying to play the tune like any other tune where I'm trying to play melodically I'm trying to weave between the chords maybe some motivic stuff I'm just trying not to go da 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 how a lot of people kind of they tend they kind of approach giant steps very mechanically with a lot of patterns and stuff and that's that's just that's okay I mean that's not the way I do it but that's how a lot of people do it and I don't think it really needs to be that way. Um, there's some great versions of Matheny doing giant steps where he plays it like kind of straight eights and he slows it down and stretches the chords out a little bit. And it's beautiful because he just plays, you know, like it, like in any other tune where he's really playing melodically and developing his ideas. That's what I try to do with this tune. Okay, so then what we do now is we play it in real time as written. So we did four bars per chord. Then we did two bars per chord when it's two chords per bar. When it's one chord per bar, we do four bars for that. Rewind that if you need to. Okay, and then we do one bar per chord if it's two chords per bar, and then two bars per chord if it's one chord per bar. Does that make sense? You get the idea. Okay, I got my backup tracks now. You could probably, I w I'm using my looper right now, but if you're really good at your um, iReal Pro, you can program your iReal Pro to do all this stuff. I don't know how to do all that. <laughs> I just do my looper. So now I'm going to do giant steps in real time, kind of slower, like this tempo. much now, now I will. Get the 
idea. I'm just kind of messing around. So that's in real time, but it's kind of slow, okay? Then when you're ready, you go and you try to burn it. And that's always challenging, even for me. <laughs> playing busier there than I need to. Actually, so I was kind of doing the usual up-tempo thing where I was kind of burning, playing a lot of notes, but you know, you can play it really simple too. I do a video on how to play fast, where you really, really play less and play relaxed. I'm gonna do it one more time. I'm gonna play a lot more sparse because you actually don't need to play a lot when you're playing a fast tempo. I'm just gonna play much more sparse. very sparse, you can play against the time, half notes, whatever you want to do. But those are just some ideas that I have on Giant Steps where I use my augmentation concept over that tune. You can do this to any tune. You can take really, really hard tune, uh, tunes and learn them. Sometimes when I'm playing a tune and if there's like a certain little section that gives me trouble, I'll just like loop that one section and break it apart. Um, one of my, I have a new CD you may know about, uh, it's called um, Empty Streets. And there's a tune in there that's called uh, Mo Train, and it's kind of like based on Cold Train changes and some other stuff. And um, I remember when I would, was practicing that tune to record on my CD, it was kicking my ass. It was hard. So I just did this augmentation thing, and I slowed it down, and I got it down. I was able to do it. So that's how you approach it. Hopefully you guys got something out of this. Remember, you can do this with any tune. This is just what I do for Giant Steps and many other songs. If you like the lesson, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. I really appreciate all of you subscribing and joining in. Tell your friends, um, check out my other channel if you like the way I play, uh, Dwayne Allen Music. There's a bunch of live videos on there and stuff. Anyway, have a great night, practice, and uh, leave comments if you have any questions. See ya.